a public service ad on TV urges motors to exercise caution when approaching railroad crossings. According to the ad, a train traveling at 30 miles per hour takes half a mile to come to a full stop. Many traffic accidents results from careless drivers approaching a train track when it's too late for an oncoming train to stop. In the Bible, we have the story of King Josiah. This provides, I think for you and I, a parallel striking resemblance. Josiah was the best of Judah's kings, though not the wisest, nor the richest, nor the mightiest military. No other king matched his wholehearted devotion to God. One of the finest tributes ever paid to a king is found in Second Chronicles 35, 27. It says, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants. And you humbled yourself before me and you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. In verse 28, says that he would die in peace, never live to see the evil that would come upon his people. When Josiah began his reign, he initiated a policy of reform, aiming at purging out the land, the land of idolatry, and bringing the people back to God. He began extensive repairs of the temple in Jerusalem, which had fallen into ruin. While this work was in progress, Hilata, the priest, found the book of God's law in the cleanup in the room. He found it. When the word of God was read in the presence of Josiah, he tore his clothes in alarm and he wept. He was horrified really bothered him, is upset to learn that his people had departed from God's word. Why? Because they had lost touch with his word. Josiah sent to hear from a messenger of God what the fate of the nation would be. The warning came back that God would pull out his raft on Jerusalem and Josiah because of, and Judah because of their neglect, being the neglect of his word. Though Josiah himself would be spared from destruction, but destruction was coming to Jerusalem. It was on its way, on its march. The reforms of Josiah had came too late. God had already set in motion by which Jerusalem would be destroyed. It was too late to stop the train. This lesson is clear. There is a point of no return in God's dealing with mankind. Three points here. This is true of nations. Man in the 21st century has tried to remove God from history. 
And Acts 17, verse 26 proclaims that it is God who determines the appointed time of nations and sets the boundaries of the resistance. History shows the record of God at work among nations. The Bible affirms that God has repeatedly overthrown nations when their cup of iniquity became full. Paul says in Romans 1 verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. We realize and know that there is much evil in our nation and our world. We know that. It's a lot out there. A few years back, I came across this, doing some reading, that three of the most respected professions one could be in was law enforcement, school teachers, education, preachers, ministers. Think about it. The students, who would ever believe People would just go in schools and start shooting them up, shooting teachers, children, small children. Who would have believed that highway patrolmen, law enforcement, could just be sitting in the car and be ambushed? It's hard to believe that somebody would go into a church service, start knocking off people. That's hard to imagine. But that's how wicked our nation has come. And it's many, many other issues we could go into. You think about it, teachers, preachers, law enforcement are probably some of the most least respected this day and time. Well, one reason we may say, well, why? Well, we, know, we know basically why respect is not being taught. It's not being taught. So the question is, moving on, what about America? Is it too late to stop the train? You know, as God's children, as Christians, we must pray that it's not. Our second point, families. Most people, if asked, would admit the need to for spiritual training for themselves and for their children. We find in Ephesians 6, verse 4, we're very familiar with the verse, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and training of the Lord. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. Yet many people make no attempt to attend church regularly. Life's spiritual dimension is totally neglected. They are content to promise themselves. You know, they'll, they'll promise themselves. Many people will. Someday we will start taking the kids to Sunday school. Someday we will start taking the children to church. Someday I will find time for God. But we need to heed to the warning that Solomon puts forth in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. When he states there will come there, there will become a, a time that will be no longer. Well in first well, I just read the verse in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Remember also our Creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when you shall say, I have no delight in them. So, question. And we could spend more time on this. But the question is, is it too late for our families? Our third point 
individually, you and I, we can wait until it's too late to escape the consequence of sin. God, we know, has natural laws as well as spiritual laws. In both realms, we reap what we sow. How do I know? What well, Paul says in Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For if he soweth through the Spirit, the Spirit he will reap everlasting, or uh, corruption. But if he soweth through the Spirit, he shall reap everlasting life. It is possible to remain so long outside of Christ that no place is found for repentance. Hebrews 12, verse 17. Hearts, we know, can be hardened in, the, in neglect. We, be, we can become so entangled in sin that we find it impossible to leave. The question again is it too late to stop the train? In Romans 14, verse 12, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. All right, here's a question for us <clears throat> What can our nation? Our families, us as individuals, do to stop the train. Now, I jotted down four. Y'all could add to my list. Yours are probably better than mine. I just jotted down four. What can we do to stop the train? And actually, I'm just putting this all three together here. Nation, families, and individuals. What can we do? Well, Jesus says in Matthew 6, we must put God first. Our nation needs to put God first. Our leaders need to re respect the principles of God Almighty. Put God first. I, we cannot serve two masters. Cannot serve two masters. We must follow Christ. Our nation, families, individuals, we should follow the good book, Christ. Christ is teaching. And in Revelation 2, verse 10, we're told to be faithful to God. Three words, I'll mention just right quick, uh, answer, an, answerable responsibility and accountability. These were mentioned in Jeremy's Bible, because well, two of them were. All three of them have been in the Bible study class this morning. We as a nation, families, and individ, individuals are answerable to God and society. We as nation, as a nation, families and individuals have responsibility to God and society. We as a nation and families and individuals are accountable to God and society. But most people try not to think about it there is a day of reckoning with God. A time will come when it will be too late to stop the train. We must stay in touch with God's Word. The Bible teaches us, Josiah, paid attention to God's Word. In Romans 12, verse 9, the last part of that verse, Paul says, cleave to that which is good. Think about it. St 
staying in touch with God's Word is good. It is good to stay in touch with God's Word. So the challenge is for all of us, each day that we live, to cleave to that which is good. Get into the Word. Stay in touch with the Word. That's what happened to the people of Josiah. They lost the Word. Lost it. And then they lost it. They didn't stay in touch with God. So this morning, today, we can stop the train. We can do it. With God's help, working hard, we can stop the train. So this morning, if you feel the need to respond to heaven's invitation, I encourage you to come stand and sing. Hard.